Welcome to the No Tracers podcast. Let's get into a new episode this week. Step into the world of decay, abandonment, and chaos. The story of an urban explorer starts here, at the beginning. Welcome to the podcast you've been looking for all along. This is No Tracers. Here, we take only photos. We leave only footprints. And remember, leave no trace. Well, hey, welcome to No Tracers. My name is Kay. I'm your host on this podcast. I'm known as No.Tracers on Instagram. All my social media are down in the description for you guys. Welcome to the show. This show is all about exploring abandoned places. It's all about urban exploration, decay, photography, all the things we know and love. If you're new to the podcast, hit the subscribe button. We got episodes coming out every single Friday. If you are an urban explorer that wants to share some of your crazy stories and you want to come on the show, hit me up at no dot tracers on instagram drop me a dm or you can email me at contact at no tracers.com if you don't want to necessarily come on the show because you don't like public speaking or you don't want to have your voice on air uh you can email me a story at contact at no tracers.com and i'll read it on the show also if you leave uh, a rating or feedback i might read that on the show i also get some crazy emails and i love reading them on the show because i feel like you know, not enough people understand these emails that I get and they're just crazy, dude. Some of these are absolutely insane. Um, you know, I, I get stuff, I get a lot of emails about this specific church in LA, uh, people asking to go in it, people asking me where it is. I actually got one recently, um, from somebody that's an actress that's working on a movie that asked me for the location of the church. Um, and how to get in and all this stuff. And here's the thing about that, guys. Like, as an urban explorer, I know that I have a platform. I have this podcast where I talk about the stuff that I love and all that. But, like, I'm not just going to give any random stranger, you know, access to these places. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, and, yeah, just, like, don't ask for locations like that. It's, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> but, uh Thank you guys for tuning into this episode. This week on the podcast, I'm speaking with an explorer based out of the Bay Area. He now lives in Los Angeles. His name is Eric Lampe. You can find him on Instagram at Eric underscore Lampe, L-A-M-P-E. His uh, link is down in the description as well. Also, some other things you'll find down in the description. Links to uh, some Amazon products that I think you might be interested in for urban exploring. Things like flashlights, backpacks, cameras, GoPros, drones, all the things that I would recommend. Uh, those are affiliate links, so I get a little bit of kickback whenever you buy something using those links. So thank you guys for doing that. Uh, you'll also find links to my website where you can buy one of my photography books uh, about urban exploring. Notracers.com is where you can find that. Uh, you can also find my blog over there, videos, photos, stories, all that good stuff. Uh, you can also join the mailing list on notracers.com and you'll get updated every time I post a new blog or have some, you know, public announcement that I'd like to make through the mailing list. Last but not least, I need to thank the partner of this podcast, Liquid Death Mountain Water. If you've never heard of Liquid Death, well, it's water in a can. And their motto is murder your thirst. So if you guys would like to give it a try, they have still water, sparkling water, and three flavors as well. Mango chainsaw, severed lime, and bury it alive are their three flavors. Go check it out. Liquiddeath.com. Use promo code just the letter K for 10% off your order at liquiddeath.com. And without further ado, Eric, welcome to the No Tracers podcast. Please introduce yourself and how long you've been exploring to the No Tracers audience. Hey there, Kay. Thank you for having me on here. Uh, my name is Eric Lampe. Uh, I've been exploring now, shooting now, uh, seriously, for about 10 years now. Um, exploring the greater Bay Area, of California here, before moving to Los Angeles. Um, but when I started, uh, 2011, 2012, it before Instagram really took off, I'd say, and 
exploded across the country as in the world as far as urban exploration. When I first got into it, I didn't know there was a term for it actually, or there was actually a group of people that actually did this. Um, 2011, I was going through some family dynamic changes, issues, and so my escape would be to go out to San Francisco and just kind of enjoy the back alleys and the, the artwork and the things that were like less touristy. And because um, I've done a, a number of years of the, the tourist scene and, and what you should be seeing in these big cities, you know, taking the families on vacation and seeing all the, the big uh, landmarks and everything. But I'm like, there's got to be more to the cities that, that make them interesting and and uh, unique, you know, besides what you see on the surface. And what you see on the surface a lot of time is just uh, well overpriced to enjoy, you know. And uh, so anyways, I'm enjoying these back alleys, the artwork, the graffiti. I've been fascinated with graffiti and art since I was a kid. I grew up uh, just a, as a young child, an awkward introvert, uh, bullied a lot to at one point where I got myself a little older and involved with being a criminal and hoodlum, and that's a, a terrible niche to be involved in, but that, that's what I was doing for a good number of years until I, I found a way to grow out of it, basically. Um, and I, even my first camera, early 90s, I'd say, it was a film camera point and shoot that I got out of a stolen car, and I'm not proud of that, but I had that camera for a number of years and I was always the go-to guy to shoot at parties or kickbacks like we called them and cruises and anything that was interesting. And I've always had a, a fascination with photography at, from a young age and, and seeing everything from a different perspective and, and pushing boundaries and how can we do this? And so... Anyways, fast forward again, 2011, these back alleys and streets, uh, I would start meeting some of these graffiti writers and some of these other urban explorers and the, the back alleys weren't enough. You know, we'd, we'd venture into abandoned warehouses and uh, uh, buildings and places you shouldn't be. And uh, at that time, there was probably like, a dozen or so places just within the Oakland, East Bay, North Bay area that you could you could spend a good day or so just exploring. And, and now, currently, you might be lucky if you got one spot that you could uh, enjoy for an hour or two, and that's it. You know, everything's been leveled or heavily guarded and, you know, been renovated. So Yeah, it's been interesting to watch the Bay Area kind of close down when it comes to like the urbex scene, you know. Uh I've been up there to, you know, do an entire day of urban exploring and, you know, we were it was hard to find places to get into, you know. Yeah. Nowadays I wouldn't even mm -hmm. recommend it. I mean you got a couple hot spots, yeah. but they're well they're not even hot spots and they're they're so blowing up now. They're like on every yeah. YouTube channel and easily easily findable i got a couple little gems out there still um that are kept under wraps but uh yeah just only a couple they're, they're small nothing you can make a full day out of it when i first started there was like factories and furniture wow. stores and uh, you know such a hub for uh you know uh, import exports there was a lot of stuff around the waters right. too you know and, uh, the shipyards and the uh you had the Tag Cathedral over in San Francisco near, near the ballpark there. And then you had, uh, uh, there's there's too many to name. There's furniture, one of the crazier ones was a furniture factory that just went belly up and literally like all the furniture was in there, but there's probably not one piece of furniture that wasn't oh. destroyed. This whole place was just <laughs> <laughs> bombed. <laughs> Damn, it's crazy. Cause you think like, you know, we one of our you know codes if you will like unwritten rules is like not to take stuff but i mean if you got a furniture store with yeah. furniture in it i mean come on i could furnish my whole house but then you were like it's destroyed yeah. I'm like damn yeah. you could have some like relics of the past in yeah. your house you know it's it's pretty fascinating uh so for you like take me into the first time you went into an abandoned building and like what that was like what you experienced and 
and what kind of gave you the bug to keep going? Yeah, I would say um, my first exploration, my first serious urbex adventure was uh, a friend had taken me out. Like I said, I didn't know there was a, a, a subculture for this thing or whatever that there was people that actually did this. So she just invited me along to a uh, infamous, uh, I'm sure you know it, if I named it in the Central Valley, there's a there's an old hotel out there just sitting mm. in the countryside. And so she took me out there. And at one time it was a, an internment camp for the- uh, for Oh, the, now the I Japanese. know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. So we went out there and at the time when I first went, I mean, it was, always been pretty well scarred up with graffiti and and vandalism but it still had some of the rooms to it wow. at that point and uh we went out there and we explored it and it's just like it hit me instantly i like the, the smells the, the the hearing everything it's just like all your senses are alert you know and some of those some of those smells took me back to when i was a kid like exploring different places as, as a kid and You'd hear the wind blowing, you know, something on the roof rattling, and it, it would kind of disturb you at, at one point, but it, it's just kind of comforting at the same time, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all your senses are alert. You gotta, you gotta be on your toes, and uh, you know, you gotta watch where you step and all this. But that was uh, that was the first time, and uh, it, it caught me instantly. And after that, uh, you know, like I said, we hit so many i mean ford ord i can name that one because i think that one's already halfway mm. demolished down near the monterey area dang um but ford ord and then ford ord had a prison and, and that's been demolished now and i was fortunate to get in there several times and i think the last time i went there uh i simply asked some guy that was getting off work if he could leave the gate open so me and this model could go in there and he just looked at us and said something in Spanish and let us <laughs> in. So um, that, that was cool. It was very yeah. rare that you get access like that. But I've been super cool with everyone I meet and respectful to everyone I meet. And over the years, I've been privy to some special invites to places that some others don't wow. get to. And I'm very fortunate and uh, thankful for That's that. That's amazing, dude. And like for your first time doing an abandoned place having it be you know an internment camp like the history involved in that like not a lot of people get to experience that kind of history you know and I yeah. and you know some people listening to this might not even know what an internment camp is but uh, I mean they can google it and figure it out um, I've done so many <laughs> like research page papers back in school about like you know the the history of the internment camps and and what we did over here to the Japanese and it's pretty fucking crazy but yeah. to be able to go into a building yeah. like that and like experience something like that is very special and I know that you don't take that for granted and I think that's one of the most important things about urban exploring is getting to walk through the history and you know because I mean we've got museums for you know all kinds of history but to be able to, to be able to be in a building that has that history in it like the energy of that spot is is unlike yeah. anything and i don't think anybody understands that unless they're an actual like urban explorer unless they've been to one of these places you know there's like it, it's you know akin to like going to you know battleship island in japan even you know that was something with a dark history for them and you know so there there's right. all these places that very few people get to go that we we are yeah. privy to and i think that that's exactly yeah and brave enough to go that's the other thing for sure because i think a lot of people are like oh, you know it's dangerous and like you know they have all these excuses why oh, yeah. not to go but you know for you has anything ever happened to you that made you want to stop exploring or take a break from exploring um like an injury or you know anything like that oh man no <laughs> not at all it's only it's only just money and and time out of my schedule nowadays yeah. um i've had some close calls and i've had some you know minor injuries and and cuts and you kind of just let the blood run and you keep doing your thing and kind of 
try to stop it, uh, but nothing major. Uh, climbing in and out of windows, or I think the the closest scare I had for an injury, and it was uh, it could have been real bad, and I thought it was real bad, but the story is actually funnier <laughs> than the injury. Um, there's an insane asylum down in the uh, I would say the Silicon okay. Valley that's been abandoned for a number of years and it's heavily secured. And uh, I had a friend invite me there, our thing for a good couple of years because we didn't really celebrate or do anything for Thanksgiving. It would just be get up before daybreak and head out somewhere to explore Thanksgiving day when there's virtually nobody that's on the, the road. That's the day to do it, dude. So, that's literally exploration. Yeah. Like that's our holiday. That's <laughs> Urbex day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's beautiful and i've done it every year probably since even For if sure. i'm by myself you know so uh we he invites me to this this insane asylum and it's there's only a couple in the bay area that i've probably hit at the time and so i was looking forward to this one keep in mind that he's way younger than me I'll, I'll i'll drop his name here and you should have him on the show sometime justin jenny he's an amazing uh, oh. photographer and and a videographer, et cetera. So he invites me out there and he tells me, yeah, there's a security there. And he's been there before and we sh- should be a problem. And there's a fence that we got to climb. And uh, he's telling me all this. I'm like, just keep in mind how old I am. We're going to remember, okay? He's like, no, you'll be fine. We've, we've traveled, we, we, we've explored. All right, so we get out there before daybreak. It's cold, it's wet. And we get over there to the fence and his young spry ass is over the fence before I could even look at it, you know, and I'm looking at this fence and he neglected to tell me that it's two chain links butted uh-huh. up against each other. I'm like, Oh my God, how am I going to do this? I'm wearing for some reason at this time, I'm wearing some heavy ass timber okay. boots and much respect to my East yeah, Coast yeah. people, but there's a, no way I could, I could hang in those things no more. So I get, Somehow, I clumsily, I get over this fence, and it's double chain length, and it's probably like 20 feet high. I mean, whatever they keep around, you know, it's a silence. So. And, but we also got a time, there's two patrol cars that circle the perimeter of this place. So you got to wait for the lights to kind of disappear, get over the fence, and run across this field, this driveway, and into this courtyard all in one, one swoop, so get over the fence. He's already over there. By the time I get over there, duck down behind a wall, he's checking the doors. He says, it's locked up. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, damn. And so he's like, well, I can go around the side and this and that. I'm like, dude, it's early. I don't, I'm not trying to get caught this early. Let's just get up. We got, we got plan B and plan yes. C still, right? So I'm still trying to catch my breath. Adrenaline's still pumping. We got to do the same thing to get out of there now. So he goes first. I go second. We run across this field, this driveway, hit this fence again. He's already over the fence, right? And like a little gazelle. And I try to climb it and I'm halfway up and I slip because it's wet and I fall almost face first. And just as I do that, I, I can see the headlights oh coming God. around the corner. <laughs> So I flatten myself out as flat as I can in the dark, hoping that they don't pan that way or see me because I'm in the grass, wet grass. And the lights go by, and he's like, hey, you all right? Yeah, just give me a minute. So I knew I got like one attempt left in my little body to get over this fence. So I get up to the top of the fence, come down, and when I land, I land on my left ankle I could hear Philip. Oh no. I've never broken a bone in my body. I've never had any serious setbacks like this. I mean I shook it off after a couple of weeks, but that was that was the extent of any kind of serious injury. And uh you know short short to say that we didn't get into much more that day. So. <laughs> Damn dude, yeah. We tried. I, I oh for done, sure. Yeah. Dang I hate you know I hate that those kind of things can set you back the whole day and like ruin your explore and sometimes we can walk it off and keep going but like sometimes you gotta know when to just take it easy otherwise you're gonna make it worse and get really hurt in another place you know yeah i used to be really kind of ballsy but then i've 
I've learned to just kind of reel it yeah. back a little because over the last few years, there has been a few people that have yeah. died out there doing this stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just not worth it. And people will say, well, they, they died doing what they love. It's like, no, there, there's people around you that want to keep you around. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Family, friends, For et sure. cetera. So it's not worth it. Live, live to take another picture in a... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So speaking of like, you know, we, we went through the injury stuff, but what was your scariest exploration? And this could be like a running with the cops. This could be, I don't know if you believe in paranormal or a running with the homeless or, you know, something scary. Yeah. Um, I haven't had anything seriously scary and, and it's not that I'm, I don't have any fears or I'm not afraid of anything. I'm just, uh, I've learned to conquer my fears, I guess, at a, from having such a traumatic kind of mm -hmm. childhood, <laughs> being afraid of so many things. I kind of learned to overcome so much. But I would say that anything that comes close, uh, I had an incident. I took a friend. There was an abandoned uh, mansion in Beverly Hills one year uh, that we went to. It was the Minnelli Mansion. It was held up in legal legal limbo for a number of years just right on the main street there in beverly hills and i took him there and uh there wasn't much to it i think the exterior was the most impressive part of this place but it didn't have much furniture left and some ugly graffiti inside but we go there and as i'm taking pictures in the outside exterior my friend goes in there and he comes out to me and he whispers he goes hey there's a you can see be a crack between in, inside the doorway so there's a guy in the in the bedroom with a with a bar in his hand like a lead oh pipe my God. Or, bar or something and uh some tweaker i'm like well i always i mean as long as he didn't look too crazy i always think to myself that anybody there has no more business being there than than we do so let's just try to be cool and rational and see if we could just all kind of coexist in here. So I'm like, you know, screw it, man. There's two of us, one of him, hopefully. And uh, let's just go in there. So we go in there and I announce us. I was like, hey, we're here to just take pictures. We don't want to bother anybody. And, you know, he let his guard down. He is cool. It's just, he is holed up in the master bedroom. He's like, let me clean up a little bit. I'm like, no, dude, we'll leave you alone. I said that just as I see like the bedroom plastered in like <laughs> pictures from like floor to ceiling. It's like something you see in like some serial oh killer God. movie. It's like, like, yeah, dude, you could just enjoy your space. We'll just explore the rest of the house and get out of here as soon as we can. That's probably like one of the only, there was a time in uh, New York uh, a few years back where I was exploring this abandoned juvenile hall and, that one has been demolished also. It's actually out in the Bronx. I explored that solo and I'm reluctant to explore solo, but I traveled so far to go out here. And I was actually uh, in the process of meeting up with Jen Brown. You had her on a recent episode and that's how I found your podcast oh, wow. actually. Jen Brown was gonna meet me up in the Bronx and she told me to go check out this, this this boy is a juvenile hall up there near the zoo. So I said, all right. So I have to take a train from my friend's house all the way in Brooklyn with like my camera bag and whatever else I was carrying to travel at the time. And it just a white guy up in the Bronx just didn't seem like, you know, too intelligent. But I was like, man, I came too far for this. So I get up, up there, get off the train make my way over to the direction of the, the facility and I'm feeling a little bit more at ease because it's an industrial area. There's less eyes on me and I'm circling this property trying to find a way in. It takes up the whole city block. I circle it. And I'm texting Jen. I'm like, how do I get in? She's like, oh, there's going to be a way in, you know? I'm like, okay. And then I pass by some homeless ladies. I'm like, don't mind me, ladies. I'm just trying to find a way into this place. And they're like, Oh, honey, the hole is right there. Just be careful. I'm like, all right, cool. So they helped me out and I, I made my way in and the whole place is wide wow. open. Like I'm in the courtyard now to this place and there's 
multiple doors to choose from to get in. So the door I choose, of course, I take a step foot on the threshold and there's a, to my left, there's a guy coming down the steps with like an old computer monitor. It's like, you know, like 27 inch computer monitor. What are you doing with this thing? It's outdated, you know, and I'm, he just stops in the stairwell at chest level where I never even see his Dang. face. And he stops there and I stop where I'm in my tracks and I'm like, hey man, I'm here to just take pictures. And uh, he, he said, are you cool? And I said, I'm cool if you're <laughs> cool. <laughs> and uh, we proceeded to go our way. I never saw his face wow. and I I made a, my first right and made another right to the cafeteria and I hid in a closet for like maybe five minutes just to make sure I didn't hear anything hear if he regroups with anybody. And after I thought I was clear, I take a peek around the windows and don't see anybody else. I'm like, cool. So I don't have any more run-ins with anybody. And actually the power is left on there. And that's yeah. always interesting to see when power is still on a, an abandoned building. Sometimes it's for whatever reason, it might be left on. And a lot of times it's, it's a uh, homeless that, uh, you know, rig something mm -hmm. up. Um, I was exploring there for a good couple, maybe an hour or so. And then uh, one of my favorite photos that I've taken was not actually at that place. It was leaving that place because Jen calls me and she says, hey, I was going to come in there and show you around. But there's some kids outside. And kids, I'm thinking anybody under 30, I'm like, oh, shoot, you know, I can't yeah. leave her alone. I got to pack up my stuff and get out there ASAP. So I pack up my stuff. I even got my tripod extended to some like flimsy little weak ass <laughs> weapon, you know, if I need to use yeah. it. Right. So I go out there and she's parked on the street and I, I go around out there and I see some kids running all under like maybe 10 or 12 and they're running. They're like maybe six or seven of them. And they, they run and one of them turns midway and he goes, Hey, he's not homeless. And I'm like, yo, no, I'm not homeless. And they all want to stop and ask me, what it was like and what was in there they were all geared up to go in there and explore themselves wow. you know they got little weapons <laughs> and stuff and you know masks oh my on God. And, and so i get a quick couple pictures with them at the at the end after talking to them and you know i'm not gonna be able to tell them not to i just told them be careful yeah. you know and uh so that was it that was one of my favorite pictures on that day and then we got on wow just, that's uh, incredible like you know, seeing young kids get into the hobby. I mean, even though they're probably going to go like vandalize and do whatever they're going to do. But I mean, yeah. it's still cool yeah. to know that like the bug is in people that young. Because I remember when I was a yeah. kid, we used to go explore the woods behind our neighborhood. And there was like abandoned houses and shit in there. And we used to go like wow. check that stuff out. And so it's it's cool to hear that, you know, the, the next generation and, you know, whatever is is into it as well and curious you know even yeah. though it is dangerous and like i don't advise kids to do the the hobby until they're oh, like yeah. of age or whatever just for safety purposes but i mean at least they were in like a group and it wasn't like just one kid that's like i'm gonna go check this place right. out. No. <laughs> speaking of uh you know just like being by yourself have you do you prefer to explore alone or or with people Um, I tend to like to be alone or maybe with two other people at the most. Um, I've explored in larger groups and, uh, it can be fun. Uh, it can be a nuisance mm -hmm. because people get in your shots. I mean, as you know, a, a lot of times the, the funny thing with urban explorers and you don't even have to say anything it, when you get to a location is everyone, everyone kind of splits up yeah. and does their own thing and uh, regroups and uh oh uh, yeah I, I like to go you know the, the smaller crew the yeah. better um, their safety in mm -hmm. numbers of course but um yeah just to stay undetected low-key for sure you know. absolutely um what do you do when you're not exploring abandoned places like what's your normal life like <laughs> uh I'm an avid snacker. I love it. No, um, <laughs> I, I work, uh, you know, a, a 40 plus hour mm -hmm. work week, 20 years in the Teamsters Union. And, uh, 
industry out here. And uh, other than that, I do uh, photo shoots with with models. I do street photography. I shoot, uh, you know, film medium and 35 millimeter film. And uh, as long as it's unique and out the not cookie cutter, Love I'll that. shoot it. Uh, I'm not big into lifestyle or anything like that. But I, I'm either, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm shooting when I'm off, I'm editing, um, or I'm learning something new. You know, it, it don't stop. There's not a day that goes by there where I'm not trying to do one love of those that. things. I love that, you know, photography is such a big part of your life and your world. I think that's amazing. And, you know, whether you got into photography with, you know, a stolen camera or whatever, I still think that it's like, <laughs> it was pretty cool that you got into photography when you did. And, you know, film photography as well. I think that's super cool. You know, not a lot of people can say that. Yeah, and it's making a yeah. comeback and it's uh, making a comeback on my wallet. <laughs> Uh, do you have any bucket list places that you're trying to visit? Yeah, you know, I, it's probably the, the, the usual that, that most say. Um, I've been out to New Orleans, but I didn't Damn. get Six Flags. And uh, I need to do that before mm -hmm. it's too late. And of course, overseas, it'd probably be like Italy and France. Some of those places have got architecture and buildings that, you're not going to find anywhere else in the world yeah. as castles and chateaus and whatever else. But, um, but also there's, there's stuff that slept on, on, on the United States True. too. Um, I tell people to get off the tour, uh, the Urbex tour bus sometimes and hit some of these other unique States that, uh, you're going to have to put in a little mm -hmm. bit more work. Um, maybe you won't find, uh, the bang for your buck, uh, at other big cities on the East Coast and Midwest, but you're going to have a good time and find something unique or meet somebody unique on the yeah. way. No, it's so true, man. I think that it's important to get off the hashtags on Instagram and go put in the work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. If you could live in one abandoned place that you've explored for an entire week, which place would it be? Oh my gosh. You know, I've heard this question so many times on your <laughs> podcast and every time I think about it every time I'm like, I, I can't <laughs> think of one. Um, it's kind of funny that I do this and at the same time I'm, I'm somewhat of a germaphobe. You too, and me both, you know? man. It's, it's so true. It's such a thing. I'm like, where's um, the hand sanitizer? <laughs> but I'll be standing, you know, ankle deep and who knows what kind of muck and touching yeah. what but uh yeah at the same time i'm like well i'm not gonna eat yeah for shower, sure i'm not gonna do this and i'm not gonna be around them and you cough too close to me <laughs> or you blow your nose yeah um gosh i can't think of any really uh here let hmm. me let me rephrase the question okay if you could if you could restore yeah. one of the buildings you've explored Oh my How about that? goodness. That's, that's a yeah. whole new spin. Wow. Um, still kind of got me. Maybe I'd say that the uh, mansion of Beverly Hills or maybe the uh, old Hawthorne Oh, Mall. dude, that, can we yeah. just t pause and <laughs> just go on a side tangent about that place and how much I love that place? <laughs> dude. Yeah. I need to, I would like to make one more yeah. trip out there. Um, just to do it. The last time I did it, I think there was some hokey alarm that. No way! Us. They and, put an uh, alarm in there. We ran it. Well, actually, we got. I've been in there several times, and the last time I went there, we got into the parking garage and in the stairwell. And the second we stepped foot in the stairwell, we hear like this. It sounds like a dog barking, but at the same time, the dog's barking. It sounds like almost like a. Like a recorded oh, dog weird. barking. Weird. Okay. So maybe it was like an, a, a, an alarm or something with a dog oh. barking, or they They're used that to clever. scare somebody. <laughs> Anyways, it got us our, our attention, and we walked back across the the uh, parking Dang. structure. As we head back, we see security in the car. Oh man! And he starts <laughs> to get out, and we just hightail it out of there. I'm like, we're just taking yeah. pictures, and we're like screwing our way out and getting our car <laughs> take off. But yeah. Yeah, I need to go back one more time. Yeah, the first time I went into the Hawthorne Mall, uh, we got stopped in the parking garage by oh, security. Really? Yeah. But the second time oh, cool. I went, I went with somebody else. And uh, we, 
we got in and we're there for like you know hour or two hours and then my buddy Mm -hmm. can actually make the sound of like a police siren like the you know what i mean so he was like pranking us and he made that sound and we thought it was legit (laughs) so we like book it out of the place and there were like some teenagers in there like smoking pot whatever and they like they're like was that for us like we're all running to get out and we're like i don't know we just gotta go we just gotta go so we get out to the car and then like five minutes later my buddy shows up and he's like where'd where'd everybody go (laughs) and we're like dude you fucked with us like of course we left man we were spooked spooked as hell but that's awesome to leave him home next time. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny, but, you know, I, I yeah. love, and then we went back in and explored for a couple more hours till like the sunset. And then we were like, all right, we should probably bail. Um, but yeah, I just recently saw that on a T, that place on a TV series. And I was like, wow. Yeah, dude. Amazing. Yeah, they rent it out it's for cool all kinds of stuff. They rent it out for like movies and stuff all the time. Yeah, that's a lot of times one of the reasons why you can't get yeah. it. I've heard, um, yeah, it's crazy to see how many abandoned places that are used for productions like mm-hmm. that before or after you get to explore them. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my favorites was out in Texas. Um, and I was never a big fan of the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remakes, uh-huh. but uh, the 2013 uh, version had... Uh, a couple locations out there and i shot at one of them that was really cool it's an old uh cotton gin oh wow it's super rusty crazy looking place definite horror vibes you know yeah it was a fun, fun time so that's so rad so anything i could tie in some sort of movie history yeah. with a shoot with an explore it's always a bonus oh yeah absolutely <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about social media and like what that's done for you as like a photographer as well as an explorer like have you been able to like make connections with other people and explore with them through it yeah i would i would say that uh from the from the majority it's been a, a great thing i've most of, i would say all dang you all the friends i have currently now are through social media and the, the urbex community in particular is so unique because you can have literally like every walk of life and you not know it but then you get into that setting of exploring and you're all like on one page (laughs) and uh you would never probably ever socialize or meet in any other setting but once you come together like that even if it's once or you know a dozen or so or a lifelong time uh it's always just a strong connection i've got people that i've met like one time and we still might have been uh i one instance i had a guy i met out in the la area that i originally knew him from the bay area we'd met once we never shot together explored or anything but he was living in LA. I told him I was going to be out there. He's like, cool. I'll meet you up in, I think it was Calabasas. I could, I could say where was that? Some radio tower. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I say it because if you want to attempt it, go yeah, for good it. Luck. <laughs> and they ask, um, I think it's got security posted. Yeah. Um, I met him out there. We were there maybe an hour or so and we still regard, regarded as the, you know, the, uh, the lunch meet or whatever. We just met for lunch Uh. that day. And uh, if he didn't meet me out there, I would have chickened out, probably climbing up there because there was a rope to get you up that cement bunker type thing. And I almost couldn't hang, make it up, dragging my butt up there. But yeah, we got up there and climbed that tower and shot for a little bit. But yeah, it's those connections. We still speak highly of each other and I still love seeing us work and it's not, Something I could just blow him off as like, oh, you know, we, we hung out one time, good guy, but you know, nice knowing you. Yeah, yeah, just for sure. Interesting connection for sure. Love that. I love that. Um, yeah. What do you hope for the future of urban exploring? Um, maybe that the uh, lack of uh, love on social media it gets now makes it die down some. Mm. <laughs> mm. Reality, I would like to see. 
though, and I've heard a number of people on this program speak, so I'm going to go in a different direction a little bit. I would like to see that a lot of the, the big names, the people that I looked up to at one time and still do that aren't as active, come back to what they love mm. and, and do it again. Yeah. Now, maybe they just grew out of it. That's good. Maybe they uh, got something else to tying up their time. That's good, too. But if they let some negativity online kind of sour it for them, I would hopefully they could brush it off and, and come back and get back into the game. So I love that, man. I think it's so important that they do come back and, and find what they love. You know, there's a couple people yeah, that... There's really some amazing artists out yeah. there and I miss seeing their work on a regular and, and hey it doesn't have to all go on Instagram right. I always say that not a lot of my work goes on Instagram it can't and uh yeah so yeah I miss it. you're out there I miss you <laughs> yeah calling out all the people that we looked up to mm-hmm. that are no longer in the hobby come yeah. back we miss you 100 yeah. percent, dude I'm right there with you Hell yeah. and then the the last question I have for you is what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started Mm. back everything up <laughs> bro for real <laughs> oh my i've real. lost so much <laughs> on corrupted hard cheap oh hard drives God. i thought they were decent <laughs> hard drive yeah invest in good uh hard drives to back up your uh your work and uh you know i would say uh Hmm. And then as far as the exploring aspect of things go, uh, that's a tough one. And I didn't think I was going to be stumped on it, but I would say uh, just enjoy enjoy yourself, pace yourself. Don't get in a rush to uh, see the next, next biggest thing. Uh, one of the things that can be enjoyable and has benefited me with some of the uh, – cliche and must see spots around the country is you see them so many times done the same way by the time you get to them you get to see them in a unique way mm. you know absolutely and different different light just uh you know take time to to hone your craft i tell people that i've butchered thousands of images before i get, even got a few right you know i would say the first five or Five or even six years of shooting, I probably didn't like much of my work at all. Same, same. <laughs> and it wasn't until the last five or so years, I'm like, okay, I can look back now, and this is still still appealing to me. I still enjoy looking at this. So, yeah. Awesome, dude. Yeah. So, if people want to keep following your journey, where can they find you online? Uh, just drop your social media for us. Oh, you could find me on Instagram right now. That's about it. Uh, Eric underscore Lampe, L-A-M-P-E. All right, y'all. That was my episode with Eric Lampe. If you want to follow him on social media, please do so. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the subscribe button so you get notified every Friday when a new episode drops. Also, if you guys are interested, go check out the No Tracers Urbex YouTube channel for more urban exploration content, including this podcast, my explorations, and I'm starting to do some like more like top 10 scariest abandoned places type of videos. So more story-based content. So if you're into that, go check it out. I'll talk to you guys next week. Stay strong. Keep enduring. Go out, go explore something. And remember, leave no trace.